Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Remember this, guys. Something good is going to happen to you. In Jesus' name, if you receive that, say amen. So, we've got praise reports. Tuesday, the 24th of September, we've got 10 plus salvations at morning tea. Wednesday, 25th of September, people dealing with pornography addiction. 15 plus salvations at morning tea. Thursday, 26th of September, 10 plus prayer of people dealing with temptation and morning tea. Come on, somebody. Glory to God in the highest. El Leona Adonai. Praise and lift the light El Shaddai. Lift up your shout in this place. Jesus is worthy of all the glory and honor and praise. We thank you, Jesus. Let us stand. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the glory. We thank you for your hand that is upon the school, Father God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're the author, finisher, pioneer, and you're the perfecter of our faith, who initiates, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith, Lord. Who for the joy that was set before you, you endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Thank you, Jesus, that you, how you endured the cross as you had us in your eternal mind. And you thought about us, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Who is like unto you? Who is like unto you? And all God's people said, Amen. Open the scripture. Jeremiah 10, verse 6. Lord, there is no one like you, for you are great, and your name is great and might and full of power. Thank you, Jesus. Let us begin. You can be seated in heavenly places. God bless you all. Lord, we pray you will make this road land of fertile soil, Lord. Some 30, 60, and 100 fold. We believe a 100 fold increase, Father God. Let this Word, Father God, sink into our hearts. Would you anoint every ear to hear and every eye to see, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Conviction versus condemnation. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. John 16, verse 8. But he doesn't condemn us. Romans 8, 1. What's the difference? Condemnation is not of God. Conviction is of God. Condemnation says... You are a mistake. Conviction says you made a mistake. Condemnation pushes you away from God in shame and fear. Conviction draws and pushes you towards God in repentance and humility. Condemnation says you'll never get this right. Just quit. Conviction says you are a work in progress. Keep going. Condemnation says the Holy Spirit has left you. Conviction says the Holy Spirit remains. So live in a way that doesn't grieve him. Condemnation makes you feel helpless. Conviction gives you hope that God will complete the work that he started in you. Condemnation makes it easier to continue in sin since you see no way out anyway. Conviction inspires righteousness since you see who you are called to be in Christ. You can't condemn who God has called. It's not over. You are not stuck. Get up. Keep going. The Holy Spirit hasn't given up on you. When we don't meet the standard of righteousness, the Holy Spirit convicts us of this reality. John 16, verse 8. And when He comes, He will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. But after you've been forgiven and have dealt with the issue, you need to move on. Because, Romans 8 verse 1, So now, there is no condemnation for those who belong in Christ Jesus. So there, so Jonah ran from the Lord. He went in a completely opposite direction than where the Lord had instructed him to go. What does God do? He doesn't abandon him to his disobedience. He sends a whirlwind from his presence destroying Jonah's means of disobedience, Jonah 1, 1 to 4, and he ultimately redirected him on the path of obedience. So, if Jonah, who was actively running from the instruction and the call of God, ultimately fulfilled the destiny he had, then how much more will you and I, guided by the Holy Spirit, 
submitted to God's will, and desiring to please Him, fulfill the destiny we have in Christ. He's faithful. He won't abandon you. He won't abandon you in that regard. So there's a quote from David D. Hernandez. God is better at saving you than you are at sinning. So there's a difference between practicing sin and struggling with sin. Practice means to get better at something like soccer. But if you're struggling with sin, who is it struggling with the Holy Spirit in you? That is proof that you have the Holy Spirit. He is changing your desires to love what God loves and hate what He hates. So, if you're struggling with sin, that is proof right there that the Holy Spirit dwells within you. Otherwise, you would just be sinning. God is not looking to judge you. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that He gave, loves the gift that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him as Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world, to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Romans 5 verse 8, for God demonstrates His own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, cursing God, foaming at the mouth, Jesus Christ. God sent His Son Jesus to die on the cross for you and I, for our sins. That we were once enemies of God, but He is now God in Christ Jesus, reconciling the whole world to Himself. He is a good, good, and He is a loving Father. So God is not looking to judge you. God is looking to redeem you. All you need to do is come to Him in repentance and humility. Remember, God loves you with an everlasting love. God calls you from the fruits of, your, of the womb, and He calls you by your name, and He says you are mine. Behold, when you go through the waters, they shall not drown you. When, you, you know, when the rivers come up high, come high, hell or high water, and all these things, Jesus says to us, He will never leave us, and He will never forsake us. He will be with us, even unto the end of the age. Amen. So, is God silent? Here's what you need to do. In those seasons where you feel frustrated, you're wondering where God's voice is. You're wondering why He doesn't seem to be speaking to you. Do what you already know the Lord has spoken. Many times, God doesn't give us the next directive because we've not done anything with the first instruction that He's given to us. Why is God going to give to us the instructions for step number three if we haven't been obedient with step number one? When you're not faithful with the revelation that God has already given to you, He's not going to give you, He's not going to give you progressive revelation. He's not going to light the path far ahead of you if you've not taken the first step that is right in front of you. So, right now, we're going to have a moment of prayer. We're going to have a moment with Jesus right now. So those of you who do not know Jesus Christ and you're watching online, come, hush through your heart. God is calling you onto the waters like Peter. And God says... You know, Peter was like, Jesus, is that you? It's a ghost. Jesus said, come. And all of a sudden, Peter started coming out of the boat. Now, he just came. He wasn't testing the water. He came with faith. Now, they say that he was walking on the water. No, more so. He was walking on the word because Jesus said, come. And as he had his eyes fixed on Jesus, the author, finisher, pioneer, perfect of our faith, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith, as Peter locked his eyes with the lover of the soul, he began to do the impossible. He started walking on water. And then we know the story that Peter looked to his side and he saw the waves roaring, meaning your circumstances and all that you go through. Jesus is still there. He loves you with an everlasting love. His eyes blaze with a holy fire of flame. His head is wider than all. His voice sounds like many waters. Jesus, you're so beautiful. Your feet, Lord, are like grass trying to defer us. Jesus is so glorious and so wonderful that John, the account, fell his countenance like a dead man. And then Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Jesus laid his hand on the Saint John and he just woke up. Oh, what happened? 
that Jesus is so glorious, glory, so amazing. And if you would just look to the Lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world, if you just look to Jesus, He will save you and He will forgive you of all your sins. So Peter began to sink because he was looking at the waves. You may take your eyes off of Jesus, you may have done that. Well, the Lord is graceful, His grace is sufficient for thee, and Jesus is right there. And He grabbed up Peter when he was sinking. He said, Lord, save me. And Jesus caught him and said, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Now, that was great, amazing faith walking on water. What did Jesus mean? He meant it, why didn't it last long? And then the Bible says that Peter and Jesus both walked on water back to the boat. In Jesus' name. So, to those of you who have never made Jesus Christ the Lord and your Savior, you're saying, yes, I want to make Jesus Christ the Lord and my Savior, come right now. We let us pray in Jesus' name. Come guys, let's pray for the days. <laughs> Samuel. Set apart from the rest 
for higher purposes for the Lord. You have high potential. You have the potential to be a traveling minister. And I speak that over his life in the name of Jesus. One who travels and one who teaches the word to a wide span of audience. The Lord calls you his very own, special. You are chosen by God himself to do the work of the elect. You love Jesus with an unquenchable passion. And I don't know anyone who loves Jesus the way you do. You have a burden for the lost and desire to see them all saved. So I prophesy in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, that he will see all to cause packed unto your glory. I thank you, Lord, you'll never leave me and you'll never forsake me. You're with them unto the end of the age. And all the people of God said, Amen. Amen.